Hi guys, this is Lek from CGN, and recently I was lucky enough to be invited along to a guided press tour of some of the locations in the Secret World. Uh, there were four of us, along with Craig Morrison, who is the creative director of Funcom's Montreal office. He was our fearless leader for this day. And we started off in Savage Coast. There we are now. And we are about to take the mission called uh, Theme Park Tycoon from Nicholas Winter. Finally. Are you with Grayson Security? I've been trying to get a hold... No. You wouldn't happen to have a helicopter, would you? Of course not. This is private property, but I won't belabor the fact. I'm not particularly attached to it. Who in their right mind would want an abandoned amusement park on a godforsaken island in the Atlantic? Aside from Nathaniel Winter, of course. Yeah, that Nathaniel Winter. Millionaire. Mogul. Also, as it turns out, theme park tycoon. Nathaniel brought me up here during construction. And even then, there were accidents. Workers falling to their deaths. Equipment malfunctioning as soon as it was turned on. Strange whispers at night, according to the crew, coming from the rides themselves. But he was a stubborn son of a bitch, my father. The park opened against all odds right on schedule. Whole island showed up for the ribbon cutting. But the accidents continued. A roller coaster derailed, killing a family of three. A ten-year-old kid was found, dismembered, behind the cotton candy stand. An employee in a chipmunk costume went berserk, stabbing two teenagers in the eye. By 1980, Nathaniel was forced to shut it all down. There were investigations. It was all over the papers. So we closed up shop, stayed behind while my mother and I went back to Boston. Never saw the son of a bitch again. I remember Nathaniel telling me once, after the bumper cars crushed one of the engineers, that this was all par for the course. Great deeds require great sacrifice, he said. Next time I saw my father, he was in a casket. He outlived everyone and left me nothing of his fortune. Except, uh, I don't want his money. And I didn't ask for the part, neither. All I want is answers. You can say a lot about Nathaniel Winter, but he never made a bad investment or a rash decision. So why in God's name did he build this park? I've heard them. At night. The rides? They do whisper. So Nicholas Winter is the current owner of Atlantic Island Park, and he wants us to check it out because there's some creepy things happening, so our first stop is the main entrance to Atlantic Island Park. I'll start running in a minute. There I go. I should mention these characters were given to us for the purpose of this guided tour, and the character I got has rifles and chaos magic. Here you can see the active dodges that were recently added. You just double tap a direction key to dodge. There's a cooldown currently of about 10 seconds. But you know, that's beta. Right. So here's the main entrance. Our first goal is to check out the map. So we know where we're going. He asked us to check out the ride, so we've got to go to each ride in turn. Here's the map. Uh, the media pop-ups like this are designed to show you exactly what your character would see physically in the world. This is the actual map that's on that poster. So our first stop is Octotron, which is just over here. We have to turn it on. Now, I started up. At this point in time, we have a choice. 
during this mission. You can stay inside near the ride itself and those arms will protect you from the mobs. So any mobs that come past will hit the arms of the Octotron and they will die. But, as you just saw earlier, there is a AoE that comes out from the middle of the Octotron. It's an electrical AoE. So you, ha you run the risk of dying from that AoE if you stay inside. We chose to stay outside and fight the mobs as they come through to us. But there's still AoEs to avoid even if you stay outside, especially from those big Hulk guys. So at this point it's a survivability goal, you have to survive until the end of the ride. But as you can just see, one of our peop one of our team already died. We had T3 items and equipment, but even with a group of five, one of us died, so this is a particularly hard mission. Particularly the Octotron is hard, we did it once before with CGN on a live stream and I found it hard then as well So the ride has stopped, we're just clearing off some stragglers at the moment. Now what happened here is because one of our team died, the quest didn't update for her. So we need to do this tier of the mission again uh, for the one that died. So in a minute she's going to run in and turn, on, turn the Octotron on again. Okay, so here we go, this is our second attempt to do it with no one dying. So right there, we all got hit by his AOE because we didn't move out. <laughs> we didn't move out the way in time. I've got to say, I honestly would really love to ride on the Octotron, it looks cool, even going as fast as it does like that, I would love to ride on it, it looks awesome. And it's finished, and this time none of us died, so that means we've com successfully completed that T for everyone, and we can move on to the next part.
uh, which is this really creepy, crazy uh, penguin statue that shoots fireballs at you. Bam. There we go. I got hit. So this thing is possessed. It shoots fireballs at you. You have to stop it from shooting at you. While fighting off the hordes of zombies that never stop. As you can see there, there are fuel tanks behind it. So if you shoot those fuel tanks, they are destructible and they will explode and damage the statue. Now if I go around the other side in a minute, there's another one. So once we get that second tank, the statue will stop shooting at us. Done. Our next stop was the roller coaster. Of course, no good theme park is complete without a roller coaster. Hmm, no mobs to fight at this tier. All we have to do is ride on it, which seems pretty simple, but... It's actually one of the funnest parts of this particular mission. What other game can boast that you can run over a zombie with a roller coaster? Honestly. Come out, come out wherever you are. And we made it safely through. Relatively speaking. So next we're going over to Lover's Lake. And we've got a bit of a friend there. So inside the lake part, uh, it's full of mud and it slows you down so you can't run at all. And there he is, the mud golem, we need to destroy him for this tier of the mission. My tactics were just to stay away from it so I don't get hit. There we go. He dropped pretty fast because we do actually have five people. But as you saw before, some bits are easier, some bits are hard. So, 
no trip to a theme park would be complete without visiting the Ferris wheel. But that's where we're heading off to next. So there it is there. We have to examine the, um, what are they called? Carriages? As you can see there, I didn't actually examine it, but everyone else did. And, uh, because this is an MMO, you don't need to do it. The other people in my team did it for me. That guy there is the boogeyman. He does not want us going near the Ferris wheel, so... Instead, we're going over to the Dodgem cars. This is the last part of this mission. Inside the Dodgem car area is the final boss. The Dodgem cars do move around, and if they hit you, you get knocked down. But they can also hit the boss as well. He is not immune to it. There he is there. Big scary scarecrow with the chainsaw. And as you probably know by now, if you know anything about the secret world, you don't need to head back to the quest giver to finish the mission. All you do is click on the button on the side, and that's the equivalent of bringing your faction to, head to tell them what happened. And there's my XP reward, AP and SP. So that was our trip through Savage Coast. Hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Uh, in the next part, I will be heading over to Egypt to take a look there, so keep watching.